First up, I would like to personally congratulate the four winners of the two contests we had running this week. So Cillian and Berez were the two winners of the 8GB RX 480s, and Jared and Josh were the two winners of the two Captain 240 EX all-in-one radiator combos, one of which I'm sporting in my own personal rig. So let's cut to the chase. Space. It's empty, right? Well, for the most part, there are trace gas molecules zooming around, namely hydrogen, and depending on where you are, you could find anywhere from just one atom per cubic meter of outer space to several million of them within the same volume, but that's still nothing compared to Earth's atmosphere. Interstellar and intergalactic space tends to be the most void, and thus will be used for this representation. So imagine yourself floating between galaxies, say between the Milky Way and Andromeda. You're 11.8-ish quintillion kilometers away from Earth, and away from anything else else for that matter. So let's take your spacesuit off here. Boom. Done. You're in a vacuum. But nothing happens at first. At all. You aren't instantly frozen, you didn't explode, you're just floating. And you can still see things, you can still move around, so what's missing? Well, oxygen. Your body is still functioning normally at this point internally, but it needs O2. And don't try holding your breath and forcing your mouth to stay closed. Space.com points out that doing so would result in your lungs expanding and finally exploding. Try this at your own risk if you're up for a challenge. Close your mouth and force as much air as you possibly can out through your nose, essentially deflating your lungs. And then, just when you think you can't deflate your lungs anymore, keep going. Don't, don't go until you pass out, but you, you get the point. Even when you feel like you have no more air to expel, keep going, and that is exactly what space would feel like on your lungs. Just picture them shrinking. Shrinking a lot. But as your lungs shrink, your body itself will begin to expand, slowly, like a balloon, to twice its size. Nitrogen in your blood does the same thing oxygen would if you tried to hold your breath. It expands. Essentially, boiling points of fluids within your vessels reduce. Things that should be in the liquid state within your body turn into gases. A NASA test subject in 1965 was exposed to near-vacuum conditions, and reported that before he ended up passing out about 14 seconds in, that the saliva on his tongue and in his mouth began to boil. So, yeah, not good. So first your hands, then your feet, then the rest of your body would all expand. But not to worry, that is not what kills you, and no, it's not the temperature of space either. We've all been told that space is cold, very cold, and that's accurate, but only on a molecular level. Simply put, there isn't enough convection and molecular conduction in space to freeze you quick enough. It would take several minutes to hours before your skin even showed the first signs of frostbite as a result of temperature in space. Your body's radiating and losing heat, but not at a fast enough pace to kill you first. That, my friends, is thanks to asphyxiation. Asphyxiation. Remember the thing about lungs? They don't like vacuums because in that kind of environment they cannot hold oxygen. No oxygen, no organ function. First your brain, then your other vital organs. After roughly 20 seconds of deep space exposure, you've blacked out, and another minute after that, you're, you're dead. So no, you won't immediately freeze, you won't immediately explode, and you won't immediately boil. You'll just slowly suffocate to death. And in space, no one can hear you scream. Sci-fi movie got that right. There's, it's too empty. There's not enough molecules. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us. Did I do that in under four minutes? 